totally get off. Hey guys, Kevin here. I've been asked to do a video on how I catch skipjack from the bank. Uh, I got a message from one of my viewers uh, of a previous couple of videos asking for it. So uh, we're going to do a short video on what I do, how I do it. Uh, uh, I just did what a couple of guys that I knew that caught them regular told me how they caught them. Uh, I started going to the, uh, the dam. I started catching a few. Uh, honestly, I asked a lot of questions from guys that were already down there fishing. Uh, I tried to look for the old guys. You know, the old guys usually know what they're doing. So uh, I found a couple of old guys that I talked to. And these are some tips I've picked up along the ways that I'm going to share with you. Uh, first off, you don't need an expensive setup to catch skipjack. Skipjack are not heavy. Uh, those of you that have seen them and know them, you know, a big one, I, I've never weighed them. I'm guessing a, a big one's a pound, pound and a half maybe. Uh, so what I typically use is an inexpensive Walmart casting rod and casting reel. Right here is a cheap Shakespeare excursion seven foot rod that I was using. And you'll notice that it's now a five foot rod it's cheap and it performed like a cheap rod but i had it for three years i think i paid 20 bucks for it at walmart so uh you know i'm chucking it to the side so here is the reel it's a spinning reel that came on that cheap rod that i showed you a minute ago i think 20 25 bucks is all i paid it is a uh, daiwa spinning reel it's a uh, you know just your standard walmart setup now, since I broke the pole that it came on, I put it on another pole. This is just a pole I had around. Uh, this is a Tiger Spinning by Shakespeare. It's a, uh, I don't know, six, six and a half foot rod, I guess. It, no, it's seven foot rod, medium action. It's a bigger rod than you need for skipjack, but it was just an empty rod I had sitting around without a reel on it. Uh, let's talk about something you don't do. Don't do something stupid like I did. I had 10 pound test on this line or on this reel that worked perfect but I thought you know I'm going after small fish let's put some light test line on this and uh, maybe do a little better job of catching these skipjack nobody said do that I you know none of the old guys I talked to said do that none of the guys I know that fish for them regular said hey put some light test line on there you'll catch more that was a, a stupid Kevin mistake. So I had this uh, four pound test. I'm holding it up like you can see it. It's, it's tiny. Uh, this four pound test, monofilament, uh, I don't know who makes it. It's, it's inexpensive, I'm sure. Uh, that I put on this reel. And as you'll see in some of the video I'm going to show you of, uh, of us fishing, uh, it broke. It's crap. Don't use this four pound crap unless you're maybe maybe you know taking the kids fishing for bluegill or you know if you're if it's spawn season you're trying to catch bluegill. This stuff is useless. It breaks way too easy. Uh, any abrasion makes it break easy. It's just crappy line. Uh, so now that we've talked about the reel, the pole, what line not to use. Uh, I, I had ten pound test on here before. I'm gonna take 10 pound test off, or I'm gonna take this four pound off and put 10 pounds back on it. I never had a problem with the 10 pound test. Uh, so that's what I'm going back with. Uh, so now that we've talked about the, the pole and the reel, and I've got line in my hair, let's talk about the, uh, the tackle that we use, and uh, I'll show you the setup I've got. All right, so uh, to start off with, I don't wanna have to carry my whole tackle box with me when I go fishing for skipjack. Uh, I've got a lot of stairs to climb down. I've got a cooter I'm packing. Uh, so I'm going to travel light. I went to Walmart, picked up this uh, uh, Plano portable stowaway uh, or portal latch stowaway. It is just one of these inexpensive tackle box adders that uh, comes with all these little pieces that you can break and put in uh, different slots to make your, your slots bigger or smaller. 
Now I have some stuff in here that is just for skipjack. I've got a few other things, like I've got some bobber stops and and uh, I've got some catfish hooks. Uh, I've got some kale hooks. I've got some circle hooks. I've even got a few uh, plastics here that uh, I use more for crappie. But anyway, this is good for taking down with me. That's uh, it's quick and it's easy to grab. So let's talk about some of the actual jigs that we use. I always use jigs when I'm fishing for skipjack. Let's get that to the side. The one that seems to do the best for me is this little guy right here. It's a little sixteenth ounce. I guess you call that a feather jig. Uh, little red-headed, white. That tends to do the best uh, this time of year. Now, if there's been a lot of rain, or if uh, you know it's early in the spring when it's, the water's a little muddier, not as much clarity, then we we'll go with something brighter color. I picked these up at uh, Ken's in Lake City, Kentucky. If anybody's from around, he's he has these pre-packaged, ready to go. Uh, moving that one aside, I go with the same thing, but in an eighth of an ounce. Typically, what I'll do is I'll put two of the sixteenth of an ounce uh, higher up my line. And I'll put an eighth of an ounce one on the bottom. That way I can cast a little bit further. Otherwise, it's the same thing. Sometimes, though, they don't want the feather jigs. Sometimes I do better with something like a, a curly tail. Uh, I've got different colors. I've got a white, a green, a uh, chartreuse, I guess is what you call that. You'll notice these two are, are bigger. This one is, uh, I think it's more the uh, 16th ounce and these are the eighth of an ounce. I even have some of these funky colors. Uh, I'll lay up there. There's one that's red with a shiny. Uh, sometimes, I'll put this in my hand to help you see it. I'll put a spoon at the end of it. Sometimes they really like to hit a spoon. I normally have a few different sizes of spoons, but I've only got that one right now. Uh, but that is what I use. Uh, the color that I use, I let the fish dictate. Uh, so what color do I use when I'm fishing for skipjack? Uh, I let the fish dictate that for me. Uh, you, you know, skipjack are like bass or like catfish, like every other fish out there. Uh, different times they want something different to eat. Uh, it's typically is determined by the color. I, you know, I don't see a lot of fluctuation in size making a big difference unless I'm not seeing as many of the bigger skipjack running. If I'm seeing a lot of skipjack uh, that are small, then I'll obviously drop down to the smaller jigs. Uh, I find that when the water is stained or, or muddier, then I'll, take a, I'll use a brighter color. Uh, like for example, the chartreuse, if you can see that one. Uh, Sometimes I use a chartreuse in one area of my line and a green in the other. Uh, and then every now and then I'll throw this wild colored pink and silver shiny thing on there. Uh, but I'm going to say 70% of the time the white jig, whether it's a feather jig or a curly tail jig, is what I catch the most on. Uh, I tend to prefer the curly tail. Well, I don't know, personal preference, I guess, just the, the plastic curly tail is, uh, you, know, you can find them anywhere, so it's not hard to get them. Uh, the feather jigs, you know, they come pre-tied, so if, you, if you've if you caught a few fish and it starts to get tore up, you know, you got to throw one away and start over, where with the, the curly tails, you know, you can buy a package of the plastics and just keep using the same jig head. Uh, how do I tie them on the pole? Let's talk, talk about that. All right, guys, uh, to address the last thing that I get asked most commonly, which is, uh, yeah, I know you use jigs. How do you set your jigs up? Uh, do you just throw one jig out? Do you throw 10? Uh, there are lots of different ideas, lots of different ways to do it. Um, you can buy sabiki rigs. They're already pre-set up. You know, most of those sabiki rigs are going to have five or six uh, small little jigs tied up. Uh, I, I don't go with that many. I typically set up three jigs on my rig only because as you're casting this, these things like to kind of spin end over end. They tend to flop and it's real easy to get them tangled up. The more you have tied on your line, the easier it is 
to get tangled. Uh, so here's how I do mine. I do it because it's simple and it's easy and it seems to work. Uh, I go with three and I, I didn't, I told you earlier I typically use white here lately, but I use three different colors on here just to show you, just so you can see it. And all I do is make a simple knot. If you can see that hanging from the line, I've got one there, about a foot or so down the line, I've got another one. And then at the very end of my line, I tie one more. Now, I used three eighth ounce jigs for this to show you because these are the biggest that I have. Uh, but like I said earlier, you typically only want to have one big one on the end and let the smaller ones hang down or hang further up the line. So this would typically would be an eighth of an ounce. I mean, I'm sorry, this would typically be a sixteenth of an ounce. This is a sixteenth of an ounce. And at the end, this would be an eighth of an ounce. So that's my setup. An inexpensive rod, an inexpensive reel. Get you something bigger than four pound crappy test line. Three jigs. Try different colors until you figure out what the fish are going to eat. Uh, tie a simple knot in your line to hold the jig on the line. Now I've seen people go to all kinds of detail on setting these up. Uh, some of them do drop lines so that uh, each, so rather than being on the line right here, you know, this jig would be hanging a few inches below the main line. Uh, I've tried it. I can't tell it makes a difference. I mean, if you want to put drop lines on yours so that yours hang down and kind of flutter independently of the others, that's fine. Maybe you'll have better luck with that than I have. I didn't see that it made a big enough difference to make it worthwhile. Uh, again, I try and keep it simple. Uh, just so I can spend more time fishing and less time worrying about my tackle. Um, I guess the last thing we want to talk about is when I'm going to the dam, what am I looking for when I'm looking for the, when I'm trying to catch skipjack? Uh, just like with every other fish that likes current, I look for current seams and I like to look for uh, swirls, boils, eddies. Uh, I fish right below the dam. You'll see that in some of these videos. Uh, the area I fish is right where the discharge is coming out from the turbines. There tend to be a lot of boils. All right, guys, what I'm doing, going after these skipjacks, I'm right below the dam. And you see where the generating uh, power and water coming out from the turbines creates all these boils. As your uh, jigs go through these boils they get tossed around and the skipjack are laying in seams in there is the way I would describe it in between boils looking for the fish and a little bait fish your jigs whatever that gets tossed around coming out of these boils so they lay there looking for something that's disoriented so as I cast in I wait for it to go through these boils and that's when I start slowing my retrieve down uh, intermittent retrieve lifting the tip of the rod up different things just to get the attention of the fish if I'm not into boils if maybe they're not uh, running but one or two turbines that day or maybe the turbine is far enough out away from the bank that I can't get to it uh, I look for any kind of current disruption that I can and try and throw my bait past that and pull through that current disruption Jennifer's got one. Swing me on, swing me on up here.
And that's what I do. Uh, if you've got any more questions or anything else you'd like to know, feel free to ask. Uh, I'll put a couple of other uh, videos up for you guys to look at uh, so, where I'm catching some, uh, where I'm using some skip jack, skip jack uh, and, and hopefully you'll enjoy what you see. Uh, look in the near future for uh, some more how-to videos. I've been asked to, to do some videos focusing on certain things. Uh, one, I've got a video where I'm uh, following up on my PC Fun Reels. I did an unboxing video previously, and I've been asked by a couple people to do some follow-ups on them. Uh, I'm also, I've had a request for uh, how I use bait. You know, when I catch the skipjack and I go catfishing, how do I cut it up? How do I put it on the hook? What do I do with it? Uh, I'll have a video coming up on that soon. Um, and then I don't know what we'll have after that. We'll see. Hopefully we'll have some good fishing videos coming up. Uh, the weather's been a little crappy for fishing. We've had a lot of rain here in Kentucky lately, and on my days off, it's been raining. So I've not been able to do much catfishing. This weekend, they're calling for 50% chance of rain, but I'm going to get out there if we can and see if we can get y'all a good video. Until then, I appreciate you watching, and I'll talk to you next time.